Hey, University Church family. Hope you're doing well, staying healthy during this quarantine. I hope you'll spare a few minutes with me as we think on godly things for a quick devotional. I want to begin with a story I heard from a preacher named David Curry. If you like the audio of this lesson, I'd love to share it with you. The story goes like this. There was a boy named Tommy Sullivan who lived in this Mayberry-like town somewhere in the USA. In the center of this town went a lake that all the boys would play in on Saturdays. What the boys would do is they would take these little toy sailboats down to the water and walk beside them as they sailed downstream. Well, Tommy Sullivan wanted a boat more than anything. So one day he said to his dad, Dad, can you please buy me a boat so I can play with the other kids? Well, his family was very poor. So his dad said to reply, Son, we just can't afford a toy boat. But if you work around town, I'm sure you could come up with supplies to make your own. So that's what little Tommy did. He mowed lawns, took a paper route, painted fences, and worked until he was able to get some wood, some string, a sail, and among other supplies to build his boat. When he finished building it, he looked at it, and he said to himself, I have labored for this boat. I love it, and it is a reflection of myself. So he took some paint and wrote S.S. Sullivan on the back. Saturday came along. He grabbed his boat after breakfast and ran down to the water and put the boat in the water and walked alongside the other young boys as a whole clan of boats went down the stream. All of a sudden, there was a flash of lightning behind them, and the boys turned and looked, and a summer storm was brewing behind them. It was almost upon them. The boys turned back towards the water to retrieve the boats, but Tommy's boat was caught in the gust of wind from the storm front, and it drifted in the middle of the lake and further and further down the stream. Tommy could not swim, and Tommy, Tommy lost his boat. Tommy was distraught. He sulked around the house for several days as he tried to recover from his loss. A few weeks later, he was walking downtown and looking into the windows of the stores that were downtown, and he saw in the window of the sporting goods store a toy boat. He ran in the store, picked it up, and on the back of the boat, it read S.S. Sullivan. It was his boat. He found it. And he went to leave the store, but the owner stopped him and said, Boy, where do you think you're going with that boat? The boy said, It's mine. I made it. See, it says right here, S.S. Sullivan. That's my name. The owner said, Son, I paid for the boat to sell in my store, and if you'd like it back, it'll cost you $20. So Tommy, once again, was distraught, but he was determined to get his boat back. So he mowed more lawns, took more paper routes, painted more fences, and he worked up his $20. 8 a.m., sporting goods store opened. He went in, emptied his pockets with loose change, pennies, dimes, nickels, wrinkled up dollar bills, and waited impatiently as the owner counted up the money. Alas, he had $20, and the store owner said, Mr. Sullivan, congratulations, you are now the proud owner of the S.S. Sullivan. The boy was ecstatic. He grasped his boat proudly and ran out towards the lake. As he was leaving, the store owner recalls hearing him say, Now you're twice mine. The first time I made you, but you left me. And the second time I bought you. That's exactly what God did for us, isn't it? We are twice his. He made us. And we left him. And through the blood of Jesus Christ, he's brought us back. In first chapter 2, we read about the price Christ paid for us. It says in verse 23 and 24, in reference to Christ, 1 Peter 2, verse 23 and 24, who when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Christ bought us with his blood, so our sins could be forgiven, so that one day we could hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. No matter what trials we experience, no matter the pain in life or the isolation we feel, say, during our quarantine, we can always seek refuge and comfort in knowing that Jesus died for you and me. Psalms 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I hope these words and these thoughts are encouraging for you. And I pray for your health and for your safety during this time and that we can meet together as brothers and sisters in Christ again soon. Thank you so much.